Hello and welcome to another episode of On Another Planet with me, Emma Jones, and our resident director of football at Macclesfield, Robbie Savage. How are you doing, Robbie? Oh, it was a busy week, Jonesy. Transfer um, window uh, was shut on Thursday. Um, it's been a busy week. We are going to get stuck into that, but we're also going to be joined by Planet Sport journalist Harry Watkinson to talk about the upcoming games in the Premier League because it's a busy week there as well. But let's give you a moment because, like you say, it's been a great weekend for you. It's been really, really busy, but you managed to get the win 3-1 against FC United at the weekend. Yeah, you know, since the lab podcast, Jonesy, it's been a great week. We went to Ashton and we won 2-0. Very, very good performance. We had a um, goalkeeper sent off. Um, and Paul Dawson went in goal. Um, we played the last half an hour with 10. Um, the goalkeeper um, got a straight red three-game ban, but unfortunately for Joe, he picked up an injury, going to be out for six to eight weeks. This was on Tuesday night. Um, went for the scan on Wednesday, ruling him out. So the, the window was Thursday night at 5pm. So... We've got two other goalkeepers here, but the manager wanted to bring in another, um, use his contacts on the phone non-stop. We had to try and find a goalie who could obviously play in the FA Trophy semi-final on next Saturday at Gateshead. So we found Ollie Byrne, who was Altingham's number one last season. He made his debut at the weekend, so that was anxious way to see if we could get him in. We got him in. We also had to get a left back in because... Brandon Lee, who's been magnificent for us this season, picked up an injury. So on Saturday, we played Neil Kengi at left-back, who'd done well, but he's a, a wide player. So we brought a young boy in from Fleetwood. Fleetwood were great with us. So oh, we had two or three offers for players ourselves. Um, it was manic, but we, we, we got through it. Um, and then we went into the weekend's game against FC United with our record crowd of the season, the record league crowd of... 4,298. Um, it was a great day with a win, 3-1. Um, deservedly so. Um, but it was a beautiful sunny day. We had a DJ on. Um, FC United fans, I think they brought 560 Jones in the way. And they were they were singing all the way through. It was a great atmosphere. Um, and it was a good week for us. Um, two wins um, took us up to th- um, third. Um, we've got a big <coughs> game. Um, today, as we record this on Monday, against Hideaway, who are currently in fifth. Um, it's a mini playoffs. So in our league, Jonesy, Radcliffe will go up, they win the league. Second play fifth, third play fourth in the playoffs. If you finish second, you play at home. If you finish third, you play at home. If you win, the highest positioning team in the league plays the final at home, one leg. So finishing second is imperative. Wow. So today... Um, Third play fifth, and second play fourth. Warrington play Marine. So it's a big, big um, mini playoffs today, kind of. Um, so it was it was a, a stressful week, but we got through it with two wins. And I've got to say, we talked. Rob was on last week, wasn't he? Talking about how much it takes to run a football club, the finances, and at the weekend, for instance. The match day revenue for clubs is vital. With that crowd, we had, our, I think, one of our best ever match day revenue profit that we've ever had since we've started the football club. So, for instance, if I can break it down. So, if you think of season tickets, match day tickets, programs, um, amount spent per head, um, person entering the ground, Everything that's taken into account, we probably brought in on on sat on Saturday about seventy thousand. Wow! Um, How yeah, much of that was which, profit? So profit, would you're probably looking at about forty. Um, so I think that's one of our, and we've had a couple of those this season, um, which is quite remarkable. You know, the amount of spend in the away end was was fantastic, in the bars, in the fan zone, um, so. Again, um, when you do your analysis of, of I think it's, there was four to 20 home games, or is it 19 because the mass dropped out? Um, you're looking at the difference on a Saturday to a Tuesday. And what we try to do this season is the amount spend per head. I think we're on about 
five pound fifty. We're looking to get that up to eight pound. At the weekend, it was about six pound fifty or something like that. Um, but what you see is, so when you get a cup run as successful as we've had, games get moved to the Tuesday night. And I think the average spend per head on a Tuesday is about £3.50. So you can see the difference and the amount of profit on a Tuesday. You know, because the average attendance on a Tuesday, Jonesy, is working about about 2500 The average attendance um, overall this season um, is 3000 I've done the... I've done the the numbers the other day, Jonesy, we've had 60,404 through the gates this season, home and away fans. Um, divide that by, I think it's 18 or 19, I think we're about 3,179 average. So the difference between a Saturday and a Tuesday home games is huge. It's huge. But then you offset them against the, the cups, what you bring in there. So it probably evens itself out a little bit. But again, we we're delighted with how that how we how we're going. Uh, Michael Clegg's um, again another win. It's a huge game today. I'll probably um, send a voice note into the group after let you know how we got on. It's going to be a difficult, difficult game. We drew with Hyde here on Boxing Day. Um, another crowd over four thousand. Um, Rooney's back today, um, which you know we you know John will go back into the squad. But this is the business end now, Jonesy. It's this is the biggest week in the football club's history, Mac as Macclesfield FC. High United um today, Gateshead in the FA Trophy semi final um on Saturday. Um everybody's wrote us off um already, but it's a huge week for the football club. It's massive and like you say, you're at the business end of the season now, Robbie. So as director of football Talk us through your hours. What kind of hours are you putting into the club? How often are you there and what are you having to do? What are the things we don't know that you're doing right now and that you'll have to be doing for the foreseeable? Well, it's it's a little bit different at these levels, Jonesy, as, as Rob has already alluded to. Myself and Rob don't get paid um, at all, but we're, we're here every every day. So not just, not just, like we've got a tournament on today. We've had three tournaments. Um, we had a Friday Sunday and today, there's I think 156 teams here today. So you've got to, you've got to manage the staff for that. Um, but obviously, then I'm going to watch a game this afternoon. Um, tomorrow, um, the lads will be in training, cool down, ice baths, recovery session. Then you'll do analysis on the game. You'll watch the game. You'll get your um, social media out. You know, previewing the next game making sure fans um, are all aware of the situation with Gateshead. Is it, is it all ticket? Can you pay on the gate? Um, you're then designing the kit for next season, which, we've, which, we, which we're doing. There's so much stuff that you have to do. My focus is really on, on... There's not much now in terms of now the continuity because the transfer window's closed, so it was a busy week last week. It's just managing... The situation we're in, organising the travel for for Friday, um, where the lads are going to leave their cars on the pickup points, um, making sure that um, we're all set, organising stuff with the hotel for Friday. Um, but again, one thing that I pride myself on, Jonesy, is that listen, I might not be the most educated, knowledgeable person in the world. But one thing I can honestly say is that nobody will work harder in this role than me. You know, we've seen Jed, you know, our, you know, our, our kit man, he done a little um, montage on social media, which he sent everybody saying that nobody works harder than him. And what I try and do with all my staff is, you know, is there to help them, to support them. But all I ask is there's nobody works harder than them. And if I can do that, myself and Rob, um, we, we'll get things wrong. And we've got lots wrong, no doubt about that. Um, you know, we were getting hammered for um, the £17 entry to the ground. And I've said numerous times on this podcast, no matter if Manchester United played Man City out there, the price would be £17. Because we're run by, you know, the SAG committee, the council, the cost to the... To, to put a game on here, 
no matter if, if Mac play FC United or Man City play Man United out there, it's the same cost. So that's why it's £17. Um, but again, you have to deal with the social media. You have to deal with emails. You have to deal with so many things in, in running a football club. And the one thing that has opened my eyes, and when I see, you know, the, when I see people talking, that's why I don't like talking about managers, Jones, Ian Jobs, because I've seen firsthand how different scenarios of managers. I don't know what happens at Chelsea. I don't know what happens at Manchester United. Everybody's got their own process in place. Everybody's got their own philosophies. So for me to say managers should no longer be in jobs is difficult. I can only say at Macclesfield what happens because I see the process. I see the budget. I see um, I see what's it what's expected. I see what how managers should conduct themselves. I deal with agents. You deal with players. There's so many things that when I was just a pundit who hadn't experienced being a manager or experienced being a director of football, when I would sit on the TV or, or the radio and come out with silly, stupid things, not knowing really what goes on internally at a football club. So for me... Being in this role has educated me and helped me as a pundit, knowing now not to say the first thing that comes into my mind, which I've done many times, and it's stupid. And I look back and think, why did I say that? Not knowing the full extent of what a particular football club, a manager and players and sporting director have to deal with. So, again, that's why you'll never see me now, George, saying a manager should be sat because I don't know what the sporting director, what the, the owner, what, the, what happens. So that's why I, in this podcast, when we talk about it, if you ask me a question, I'll probably, I'll probably never say a manager should be sat. It's a results business. I've had to look a manager in the eye here and, and relieve him is due in. It's very difficult. But you have to think. You have to do the best for the football club. So... Again, some pundits will sit on the TV and sit on the radio and just say the first thing that comes into their mind, not knowing the full extent of what goes on behind the scenes. And I think this has helped me massively in my punditry work because dealing with agents, dealing with players, dealing with managers, dealing with staff, dealing with you know my partner. Now we've got investors. So again, it's so many things and it's... It's difficult, but that's why now, when I listen to pundits who just say, sack him or he's no good or he's done this, well, do you know the full extent behind that? Why? So again, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, I'm boring you now as well. <laughs> Sorry, you still going? I'm joking, I'm joking. But I will remind you of that if I ever think you're chatting nonsense, all right? <laughs> yeah, but, it's, but, it, but again, Josie, it's, it, again, it's, it's opened my eyes to what run of... And people say, well, it's only step three. It's only Macclesfield FC, but we had the fourth biggest attended game over the Easter period in non-league. Um, we're, we're a league football club in stature. We're only where we are because of what happened to the football club. But we're trying, two lads having a go to get us back to those heights of football league. It's going to be difficult, but in a great position. Um, so again, this is a... This would be a full-time role. It is a full-time role and a paid role. If I was doing this role higher up in the football league, you know, I would expect to be paid, you know, for it. But I'm doing it because a, I love it. I wanted to help my partner, at Rob. Um, I'm engrossed in it. I live near the football ground. Um, and I want a community to succeed and the joy on people's faces, Jonesy. The amount of, you know, youngsters who were with their families at the weekend with the Mac and Phil shirts. And what we've done for the, to this football club where it's just nothing short of incredible. And listen, people have said already, they don't, you know, I hope they don't go up. Who do they think they are? £17 for a ticket. But again, these people on social media have no idea. You can, you can tell them so many times and they don't want to listen. If you don't want to listen, you don't listen, do you? 
No, but I also see, and I have seen since doing this podcast, and you and Rob, um, the owner, talking in depth about Mac, a lot of positivity and a lot of love towards it. So I think it's important to focus on that as well and, and offer a nod to those people because, like you've seen at the weekend, you have an overwhelming amount of support. Look, it's quite thank you. Quite remarkable. All right, Joe, listen, yeah, I'm, I'm boring you now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. See no, you next week. No, you're not boring me wow. at all. But I do know, I do know that we have Team Talk journalist Harry Watkinson waiting very patiently in the wings. So do not go anywhere because after the break, we are going to look ahead to some of the Premier League fixtures this week. Harry, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Uh, it's good to be back, despite uh, despite Everton struggling once again. So that's yeah. not good, but yeah, it's good to be here. Yeah, not a good result for your Everton lads at the weekend. Being honest, Harry, do you feel when you look at the table and when you look at the stage of the season that we're at, are you out of the woods? Absolutely not. Uh, we're three points above the bottom three. We've got a game in hand on um, the teams below us, but our game in hand is against Liverpool. So that doesn't really help much uh, if we're being realistic. It, it's getting to the point where um, the fans are just absolutely exhausted with everything, I would say. Goodison's the quietest I've ever seen it. Um, you know, we got the points deduction thing going on in the background and everyone's just knackered with it. We need to find a way to get back that that feeling again where, you know, we're welcoming the coaches in with the flares and things like that and get that feel for, feel good factor back. But, you know, it's, it's, it's it, everyone's absolutely drained and I'm, I'm, I am worried. I am worried. And it's, it's going to go down to like relying on Luton to lose every week. Um, you know, we've got a massive game against Burnley next weekend at home. If we lose that, then, you know, there's going to be pressure on Dyche. There's going to be big trouble. Yeah. So it's, it's not good. It's not, not pleasant. Harry, I want to talk about the points deduction situation in a minute and get your thoughts on that. But I know when Leeds were in the Premier League and it looked very ominous, it looked like we were going to go down. A few fans were saying, do you know what? We'd actually prefer to go down and see this team win games in the Championship and have the hope of coming back up again. Are you at that stage yet? No. Um, well, for one, you know, we've, we're, we've been in the top flight since I think 1953. Last time we were relegated 1951 so obviously we want to we want to keep that record going but like the financial implications of, of going down would be like uh disastrous for the club uh we'd lose our star players you know you'd have the likes of Amadou Onana Jared Branthwaite leaving for much cheaper fees than than what they should be going for realistically um and yeah I mean the club's already in a massive massively bad financial state as it is uh, we've got a takeover going through. Um, it just make everything that much more uncertain, uh, especially when we're building a new stadium. Um, you know, all the revenue that we lose as a result of that, it, it will be the worst possible time in our history to go down, 100%. Well, just on that, because obviously the points deduction conversation, it's ongoing. What's the latest? Where are you at with that at the minute, Harry? So uh, yesterday it was announced uh, on the Everton website that, um, we'd lost 89.1 million in the 22-23 season. Uh, and so that's so with the latest investigation into the next potential um, points deduction um, spending charge, uh, that is the season that's that's under investigation. Uh, the season before that, we lost 42 million, I think it was, and we still got bre we were breach in breach of the rules then. So that's that's a worrying sign. The thing is, it hasn't been. So there's still going to be mitigation that goes into that. Um, so it's potential. You know, it, it won't be like we've spent 89 million over the limit, but it's it's definitely a worrying sign. Uh, if you'd asked me a week Harry, ago, Harry, I'd Harry, say. Just a quick one, Harry, on that. So people who yeah, obviously don't know the rules, can you just explain what Premier League clubs can lose over a three-year period? Yeah, so over a three-year or a three-season period, you can lose 105 million. So the 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 thing that the period that's in question for us now in the latest batch of points deductions is 22, 23, 21, 22, and uh, 2021. But two of those seasons overlap with the previous points deduction. So there's a case of double jeopardy there. Um, but the fact you know, 89 million we've lost. I think we we. 
We generated something like 16 million in commercial revenue, which for a Premier League team is is just like embarrassing. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just it's just symptomatic of how badly the club's been run for the past uh, 20, 25 years. Do you remember? Do you remember when? And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please, Harry, because your knowledge on Everton is is fantastic. When the initial points deduction got implemented, didn't the team? go on and win the next four games. Yeah, yeah, they did. So, you know, it gave it gave everyone a boost, the fans a bit of a boost, holding up the uh, Premier League, our corrupt placards and, and things like that. But, you know, it, 15 games without a win, Robbie, uh, to turn that around is is uh, is 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 difficult. Um, if we get another minus, let's say it's minus two, it could be minus four, minus six. We don't know yet. We don't know. We should find out in the next two weeks. It'd be very, very difficult to turn around, I, I think. Yeah. So we'll, we'll um, see. We'll see. As an Everton fan, I'm sure you speak to numerous other Everton fans as well, Harry. Is how you feel, is that echoed amongst the entire fan base, really? Well, yeah, like I said before, I mean, when, you know, we've had two back to back close shaves of relegation, both of those seasons we've managed to rally and get the atmosphere at, at Goodison absolutely buzzing before like the, the final games of the season but I've never seen the fan base um, as dejected as they are now uh, and that's that's because of the points deductions and just the poor, poor poor form of the team I mean against Bournemouth it was absolutely dreadful dreadful performance I mean we were lucky to score the Bournemouth goalkeeper basically dropped it right at our strikers feet so yeah it, it's, it's, it's not good it's not good at all well, look, Harry, we won't talk to you anymore. I talk about everything. Yeah. Let's move on and, and quickly touch on Manchester United versus Brentford, Robbie, because they thought they put the game to bed, didn't they, in the closing moments? But Brentford obviously managed to get an equaliser and they only picked up a point. Now, we've got a busy week ahead of the uh, Premier League fixtures. They're playing Chelsea, who, you know, Chelsea fans would say they equally need the points as well. Who do you think needs the points more in that game? Oh, so they both Pochettino and Ten Hag. They both need the points equally. Um, the amazing thing for these two powerhouses is that if you look at the goal difference, Manchester United are naught and Chelsea are plus two. And if you think of all the attacking prowess te these teams have had over the years in the Premier League, for, the, for Manchester United to be zero and Chelsea to be plus two, I think there's a problem. I think Manchester United, the inconsistency, the same with Chelsea, um, is quite remarkable. I thought, I thought um, Burnley were very unlucky at Chelsea at the weekend, um, especially with the sending off and the penalty. And I thought Manchester United, for Brentford to have that many shots against a Manchester United team is quite unbelievable. You think Man United have turned the corner, they beat Liverpool 4-3, and then they go to Brentford, who beat them 4-0 the previous season. You just knew it, the, you know, the, the post, the, the bar, they had, was it over 30 shots? It's quite 31 remarkable. Shots. 31 shots. And then United, Nick will remount, but then they concede. So um, I think the big question is, Jonesy, um, who will be in a job longer, Pochettino or Ten Hag? Who, who do you think? Oh, how do you can come on this one? Um, oh, there's some. Eric Ten Hag done very well last year, in my opinion. And I think Chelsea, with no European football um, this season, have really, really struggled. I thought Pochettino would have done far better. He's got lost in the cup final. They've got an opportunity to get to another one, although it's going to be very difficult. Manchester United have got a chance to get to a cup final. Obviously, I think you know they will. I think they'll beat Coventry. I don't think, listen, Man City, I think, will win um, the FA Cup. So it looks like both managers will be without a trophy. And the big thing is both managers will be out. Well, it looks like they'll be out without Champions League football. I think, I think Pochettino will be in a job longer than Ten Hag. Um, the reason I'm saying that, Jonesy, is obviously Manchester United have had the takeover. Um, Chelsea are so many months you know, into, into theirs. The amount of players they brought into the football club, those players will need time. 
there's been signs from Chelsea in their games against Man City that with a bit of extra time, a good pre-season, the Pochettino um, can galvanise and can improve those players. Um, and I just look at Manchester United and think, especially with you know the new regime coming in, I think the Pochettino, whether it's in the summer, whether it's in the start of next season, if they give Ten Hag a bit more time, I think Pochettino will be in a job longer than Ten Hag. And I'm not saying that'll be in the summer. I just think that the recruitment for both sides, Harry, in the summer will be massively, massively important. The philosophy, the structure at Manchester United is going to be key. I just think that Pochettino will be at Chelsea longer than Ten Hag will be at Manchester United. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, um, I think there's a very good chance. I don't know, I kind of disagree. I, I think there's a good chance that Ooh. they could both be gone uh, at the end of the season. Uh, but I do, I take your point about the new ownership thing at, at Man United. So, Sir Jim Radcliffe wants to make uh, Man United the best place to develop young talent. So, it's whether he thinks, or like hot prospects, the best in Europe, whatever. Um, it's whether he thinks Ten Hag can do that. Well, he has. Well, to be fair, to be fair, Kobe Manu, Ganacho. Yeah. yeah, it's good. So it's, there's it's an good he's done that. He's done that. I think. I think Pochettino's in serious danger. I mean, we know what Chelsea are like with managers. They're are the eleventh in the table, despite spending over one billion since Todd Bowley's took over. Obviously, that's not all under Pochettino, and they're not all his signing. He's got a mishmash of players, but you know, there's been reports coming out. Um, only yesterday saying that some of the Chelsea players are fed up with Pochettino and they would actually prefer to see him replaced by by the end of the season uh, sorry after the end of the season um, so you've got all that going on in the background um, I th- I, you know I think I think they're both in danger um, if, uh, you know if one of them wins the FA Cup that, that, that would definitely save one of the managers and I think they'd get the job for the next season but like you say City are the big favourites um, but it's going to be a big summer in different ways for both for both teams. Chelsea are going to have to sell some homegrown players. They're going to have to lose the likes of potentially Conor Gallagher, potentially Reese James is being rumoured with with moves away. So it's whether does the ownership think Pochettino is the right man to do yet another squad rebuild? And the same with Man United is Ten Hag the right man to? To recruit these young players that Radcliffe wants to bring in and uh, and get them up the Premier League table, which he hasn't done this season, so uh, it's a tough one. I think they're both in danger. If here's, a question for you both. Yeah. here's a question for you both, right? If both of them are out of the job, who's taking the jobs? Tricky, tricky. It's it's tricky to say at this stage. Um, I, I know with Chelsea, the big the big fans of. Um, Simone in, in, in Zaghi at, um, at Inter Milan, but he's in talks over a new contract uh, with Inter Milan, so it's going to be very difficult to get him away from there. Uh, there's Ruben Amorim as well. Both both clubs have got their eye on him. He's Sporting Lisbon's manager, done really, really well with them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, Southgate's even been linked with Man United recently. I can't see that happening personally. But uh, yeah, it's it's it's... it's it's tough to call at this stage, but um, there's going to be plenty of names thrown around in the next few months, that's for sure. Go on, then, Robbie, yeah. throw your names around. Yeah, it's very difficult, Jonesy, because, you know, Ten High, I don't like talking about managers who are currently in jobs, you know, and thinking, because they are both in jobs. And it's, I know I'm sitting on the fence here, but, you know, in my role at Mac at the football, I wouldn't like to talk about another manager coming in when I've still got manager in place. Um, it's so difficult because, as Harry says, the academy at Manchester United is one of the best in the world for producing players. Kobe Maynou, the way they've you know, dealt with him, the, the way they've put him in the first team, and the way they've handled him has been brilliant to say, get his England cap, does extremely well. Ganacho has been brilliant. Scott McTominay has been a very good player as well this season. So all the players that have seemed to have been doing well for Manchester United this season have come through the academy system. So, and Ten Hag, 
has done has handled those players very very well. He's he's dipped them in, he's pulled them out, you know, he's put them back at the right time. So on Harry's point that if Sir Jim Radcliffe and Ineas want that Ineas want that model, then Tanag has shown he can he can do that and it's a very very difficult one and it's 50-50 on, on Pochettino or Ten Hag but I like to see them both keep their jobs yeah of course you don't want to see any managers getting you know getting relieved of their duties but is is 11th for Chelsea and 6th for Manchester United with no trophies good enough and they know there's going to be judged on results they're going to know and the big question is is Ange Postacoglu comes in from Celtic. Spurs fans, you know, on the show, on the radio I do, are absolutely loving going to the stadium, watching their team, to the point where this season, they're not going to win anything, I don't think. But the way he's transformed that team and galvanised them in the style of football from previous managers in Mourinho and Conte, they're very, very happy. Manchester United fans and Chelsea fans on the basis of the style of football as well are not happy so again you can't even say well do you know what Manchester United will finish sixth but they've played sparkling football with the style with the philosophy you know the manager needs more time you can't even say that can you Harry so again it's and to the point where if this makes sense Jonesy if, Spur, if Man United won the FA Cup and finished sixth and Spurs finished fifth. I think Spurs fans would be happier because of the style of football. And yeah. it's bizarre to think that now style of football, people are happy with, even if you don't win anything, Harry. Yeah, I agree. Fans want to be entertained, don't they? So, I mean, I can't see Man United winning the winning the FA Cup anyway. But yeah, I mean, it's the performance against Brentford, it was just like, I know we're going bizarre. back to that. But it's the playing a team that hadn't won since early February. They just lost to Burnley, and they're coming off the back of beating Liverpool. It it was very very strange. Thirty one shots conceded. There's something there's something fundamentally wrong there, and I think I do think that's why Ten Hag's in big danger because that's it's not the first time that's happened this season. I'd just like to go back, Robbie. Thank you for not answering my question. Thanks for doing five no, minutes on, a que- on the question you wanted to answer. That was very clever. <laughs> gonna, and gonna, then I, deflected by that. throwing it onto Harry. <laughs> well, 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 do you know what? You know, Harry's mentioned names there. I look at the job that Kieran McKenna has done at Ipswich. He has done an unbelievable job. You look at the job that Graham Potter done at Brighton. You look at the job the Zerby's doing. You know, these names, but... If you're looking at somebody who knew the football club um, and Kieran, um, Kieran McKenna, if somebody said, right, Kieran McKenna, at the end of the season, he's got a chance of Manchester United, what happened? But what he's done with Ipswich is quite remarkable. He's, he's a fantastic coach. He's turned out to be a fantastic head coach. He was at Manchester United. But if I said to you now, right, Eric Ten Hag, at the end of the season, might be gone. I'm going to say um, Kieran McKenna. People would laugh at me. But if you look at what he's done, he was at Manchester United, he knows the football club, but is he, right now, a big enough name to manage Manchester United? But you've got to look at what he's done. But I'm not saying for one minute that Kieran McKenna should be the next Manchester United manager. I think Kieran McKenna, if he gets Ipswich into the Premier League, that would be unbelievable. And I think Harry would agree. But I think yeah. it, would, it, would, it would mean then Kieran McKenna doing a a brilliant job with Ipswich in the Premier League, then I think he would be in the frame. But right now, if I said, right, Ipswich get in the Premier League, they got promoted last year, am I right, Harry? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're now yeah. top of the championship. On Wow, he's, he's, he's improved players. You look at Chaplin, you look at Broadhead, you look at the players he's improved. Um, so, Kieran McKenna... It's like Graham Potter when he went from Brighton, you know, he went from Swansea to Brighton. And then because he'd done exceptional with Brighton, he gets a chance at Chelsea. Obviously, it didn't work out. I think Kieran McKenna fits that mould where he's done unbelievably at Ipswich. He was at Manchester United previously. If he gets him into the Premier League as well, then I think he becomes in the frame. Do you not agree? 
Um, is there not an argument, though, that fans want to see a proven manager at that level? Because whilst it's remarkable what he's done, it would be would it not be classed as a huge risk for Manchester United to what, take on someone like that? What I would say to that, Emma, is some of the names being linked with Man United. You got your Ruben Amorim's, um, and you know even even look at Ten Hag. Yeah, they were proven at, at the clubs they've been at, but. They're not proven in the Premier League. They're not proven in English football. I mean, you could even make the argument, say, Kieran McKenna's got better experience to succeed in the Premier League than some of those names. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that, but I want you two to realistically tell me whether you think if he gets Ipswich promo uh, promoted, he would be in contention for that job. Be honest. I think he would have to. I think... No. Because I think because he's had experience at Manchester United and he knows the club... I think he's gone out and he's thought, you know what, I would have a go to being a head coach. Admire him from that. To leave Manchester United at any point is a huge gamble. He's gone out and he's believed in himself and he's done unbelievably well with it, Switch. I think right now, if somebody said, right, Kieran McKenna will be the next Manchester United manager, it won't happen. But if he gets Ipswich into the Premier League and then does like Chris Wilder did in his first season in the Premier League with Sheffield United, if he has that kind of season, then, but then it all depends if, if Ten Hag's still in a job at Manchester United and is not doing well. So there's so many things that have got to happen first because if Ten Hag leaves at the end of the season, is Kieran McKenna ready now? No. If he does unbelievable well with it, just in the Premier League, then is he ready? Well, yeah, well, why not? Why not well, what? You've just confirmed what I just said, because then he would be proven at that level. I just think, yeah, I don't think you'll take... And there'll be a start. When was the last time... When was the last time a manager or a head coach got a top six job that managed the previous season in the championship? Probably doesn't happen, eight, does it? Tough. I was going to draw it back to David Moyes and Everton, actually, at one, um, earlier. I mean... He came from Preston after doing well, getting them near the top of the championship, and then he went on to be our best manager. Um, in the then last, he got Man United. In the last 25, and then he got the Man United job. So maybe it would be a massive punt um, to bring in Kieran McKenna. No, I'm, but not saying, like I'm, say, not I'm not saying they are. I'm not saying they are. I know, I know. But, but like you say, he's done an amazing job, an amazing job, and maybe doing something different like that rather than bringing in a... Zidane, Zidane, who's going to have huge pressure to get instant success and build around a a young a young manager like that who knows the club. You know, I, I don't because think it's a terrible it, idea. You said it that obviously that you know, um, Sir Jim Radcliffe, the, the uh, young players, the yeah. hottest prospects. What Kieran McKenna can do is he can improve those types of players. So yeah. again, when you think about it logically, you know. If he has a good season in the Premier League, if it's just go up, listen, if it's just don't go up, and so, yeah, and there's a job available in the Premier League, a mid table club, I think Kieran McKenna would be absolutely first name. If I was a director of football now in a team below the top six, and I was looking, and if just don't get up, I'll be looking and thinking, right, what's his coaching experience? Very, very good at Manchester United. What's he been like as a head coach? He's been unbelievable. Even if it just don't go up, and if I was a team in the Premier League right now, next season, I'd, he would be the first name on my, on my sheet. What, so I'd if you were Chelsea, it. would he be the first name on? I think Wedge... Oh, oh good question, Jonesy. Um, oh, it's a good question. That's a very good question, Jonesy. <laughs> it's the first one you've asked in seven weeks. Oh. Um, it's, the, it's the first one you're going to answer. You tend to avoid um, answering my questions. Would Kieran McKenna be good for Chelsea? Harry? Yeah, cheers. Cheers, Robbie. Thanks very much. How about, how about any Chelsea fans listening, you tell us, would you have Kieran McKenna at Chelsea? And Man United fans, would you have Kieran McKenna there? It, at the end of the day, it's your club. So you tell us Robbie Savage doesn't want to answer it because he doesn't know the answer. I, I don't. I, I really don't, Jonesy. I the, what people will say is unproven in the Premier League, but he's had coaching experience in the Premier League at Manchester United, but not as manager. 
So anyway, no, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Over to you. Do you know what? Over to you, Chelsea and Manchester United fans. Oof. Let us know if you'd like Kieran McKenna. As well, let's say uh, Ten Hag. Uh, they've got managers. They've got Pochettino and Ten Hag. We're talking if. Yeah, hypotheticals. If they lose their jobs. We've, we've made that very clear. You did a good five minutes on that, Robbie. Thank you. Go on. But firstly, firstly. Harry, just before we go, what keeps Pochettino and Ten Hag in their jobs at the start of next season? Is it anything? Or Because I would like to see them, given the start of next season, personally, both of them. Yeah. Um, well, winning the FA Cup would keep them in, 100%. Um, and it's all about how they, they finish the season. Um, you know, if how many games we got left? Nine games. If, if, if they win six of those nine games and they seem to turn a corner, then that can make a big difference. Personally, with Chelsea, though, I, I can't see it. They were, they, they were and, and Man, you know, Man United were terrible against Brentford. But with these reports coming out that some Chelsea players are actually have gone to the club's board and saying, look, I'm not sure about Pochettino. I think that's it's, it's very difficult to turn a team's performances round while there's all that going on behind the scenes, if that's true. So, um yeah, they've got to have a really strong finish to the season to answer your question. Well, Harry, thank you for actually answering a question. We appreciate that, unlike Robbie. <laughs> um, look, Robbie, you said before we go, you're not going anywhere. But Harry, we are going to let you go. Thank you so much for joining us, as always. Oh, thanks very much for having hey, me Harry, on. Where are, where are you? Where am I? Yeah. I'm at home. Uh, there, in, <laughs> in, 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 in well, Preston. Need, need some, need some pictures on the wall, Harry. Need some pictures on the wall or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. Harry, do you know what you should do with Robbie Savage and get pictures of yourself on your wall? Yeah. That works quite well, it, Robbie. <laughs> Harry, what colour are those walls? I don't know. Beige, they're, the same, green? they're the same green. They're the same colour as our walls in the office. Oh, oh there you go. Good, good oh, taste, eh? Good taste, Harry. Good. good taste. Podcasters <laughs> peak. <laughs> next week we'll get Nick Knowles on he can join us eh Harry thank you so much you take care thank you cheers guys thank you very much eight. well there was a lot of chat about Chelsea there Robbie and on that we've had someone get in touch with us with another dilemma are you ready for this yeah this person no name says Robbie I'm a Chelsea season ticket holder and I have been for many years this year, we can't afford to go on as big a holiday as we normally would, and I'm wondering whether it's a waste of money renewing my season ticket. Should I renew it, or should I renew it, or look forward to a big holiday next year instead? Well, the question says we're unable to go on as big as holiday as we've done before. We we'll just go on holiday. You know, what's a holiday? You know, all you need does all you need is a is a bed. Because you sunbathe outside, you go out. And eat. <coughs> Says Robbie Savage, the former Premier League yeah, footballer, say, who's yeah, travelled well, everywhere saying. around the world in luxury. <laughs> you go out, and put, you, you know, you go out and put. Listen, my old days, Jonesy, I, you know, we go um, a, normal airlines, um, normal hotels. You know, what's a holiday? It's holiday. Who you go on holiday <laughs> with? It's who you go on holiday with? It's let's be honest, on holiday. You, you arrive, you check in, you put your stuff in your room, you unpack, and then you are only in your hotel room for minimal amount of time. You eat out. So again, I would go on a normal holiday, not a big holiday, and get a Chelsea season ticket. Okay, translation, Robbie Savage arrives, concierge take all of his Louis Vuitton luggage up to his hotel room. <laughs> He doesn't have to lift a finger for the next fortnight. So I'll give you the actual answer in reality. No, no that's the answer, Josie. You, know well, this... you don't like the answer. You don't like the answer. No, I don't like. I... I don't yeah. like lies. I'm going to tell the truth, right? What I what I vote is. Do you know what's what? What's a big holiday? What's a big holiday? What's a big right, holiday? So what's a small I... holiday? I'm, how I perceive that is potentially maybe, and I'm not saying this isn't good because I do this myself, they might have gone to a caravan in Wales for a few nights rather than an all-inclusive in Spain for a week, right? A caravan, a caravan of food. I used to go on holiday to Prestat in the caravan. It's the best holidays I've ever had. Yeah, mate, that was also 50 years ago, right? So Isn't you can't really go there anymore. Yeah, but, and, and, and do you know what? The mere fact that he's saying, or he or she is saying, 
we can't go on as big a holiday tells me that they are thinking they'd quite like to do that again, right? So I'll offer my point of view here, shall I? Do you know what? If you're um and ah and about it, the thing to consider is you can always watch Chelsea on your phone while you're abroad. And if they're playing poorly, you can at least jump in the pool or get yourself a Lefe or San Miguel, San Miguel afterwards, can't you? And chill out a bit. No. Chelsea season ticket for me. A okay, thank you very much. And a, Chelsea, and a Chelsea season ticket. What's okay, a big so, holiday? I don't get where well, a big holiday you, is. You tell me, what are your holidays this year? Oh, I ain't gone a minute. <laughs> I ain't gone a minute. Did I not see some of your Instagram saying to all my followers out there, Emma's DM helpline, where can I go on the best only Canada in America? Um, seriously, you're talking about big holidays. <laughs> and then, yeah, DM helpline, I mean, where for can a... I go on holiday in like, <laughs> the most Maldives? Shocking. For a start, I would never say to all my followers out there <laughs> be, uh, because I'm not 85. And secondly, oh, D- DM me. Secondly, I have saved for a long oh, time wow. because I've wanted to do this holiday and I'm not a season ticket holder. So there you go. Okay, if you if you didn't work for Lee, <coughs> yeah, what would you well, do? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not the right question to ask because we're doing really well. Touch wood. So it doesn't really work the same, does it? Because I, I would yeah, enjoy so get, it regardless. So next, please get promoted. Yeah. yeah. And the same question was to you. Yeah. Would you go on that big holiday, which you're asking all your followers, well, where can we go in the best parts of the world? Um, or get a lead season ticket? Would a lead season ticket. Would you sacrifice, I'd have done, would you I'd have sacrifice done the your big holiday, which you're asking all your followers to go on? Yeah. Would you sacrifice that for a small holiday to watch Leeds in the Premier League next I'm year's not, season ticket? I, I'm not asking my followers to go on holiday what, with me. Don't answer? put that out there. I would, the I'd have the season ticket because... Hey, you on, uh, Will you let me finish a sentence for once in your life? I would have the season ticket because I'd have done the big holiday the year before. Because this is like holiday of a lifetime for me. Because people like me don't get to do this thing all the time, Robbie. I know that's hard for you to imagine. But we have to save for quite some time to be able to do it. You've been it. away four times this year. Where to? I've been to Edinburgh once for two nights, mate. <laughs> um, just on that note, right, have you had some highlights in your hair? No. What is it? I mean, don't lie. You, you've no, had no, highlights. No, I haven't. Well, why no. doesn't it match your beard anymore? You've had highlights, <laughs> I'm telling you. A million percent, no. Is it just because you're wearing I a just, fluorescent? Just, what, I've just washed it. <laughs> 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 and on that note, on that uh, note, I think we need uh, to wrap it up there. <laughs> Listen, uh, thank you, Robbie Savage, for washing your hair for <laughs> us. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on, on Another Planet. We will be back at the same time next week. Send all of your questions in to at Planet Sport on all the socials. See you next week. <laughs>